Hey guys, John here, and welcome to the first part of the VPS Avenger 2 Master Tutorial Course. In this series, we're gonna cover everything Avenger has to offer and get you up to speed and comfortable using this synth. It's capable of quite a lot, and through the series, you're gonna see what I mean. So some of the key features of Avenger are eight oscillators, eight ARPs, eight step sequencers, eight mod envelopes, eight pitch envelopes, five amp modules, five filter modules, and a, a master filter module, five shaper modules, five LFO modules, a drum sequencer, oscillator quantizer, drag and drop modulations, 12 macro knobs, eight macro buttons, and there's, there's quite a lot more. That's just kind of the main things to think about. But yeah, it also supports wavetables, granular synthesis, spectral synthesis, resampling, and much, much more. So... Let's first start off with an overview so we kind of know where to find everything because the first time, if you're just new to Avenger 2, you might be wondering where everything's located. So let's go ahead and start doing that. On the top left of Avenger, we can set our GUI size. So right now mine's at 83%. We can click this drop down menu and you can set exactly what you would like to have. Also, if you want to do it a little bit more specific on the bottom right where this little square is, you can click and drag that to whatever you want, which is why mine's going to be 83% right over here. And then a little bit, a little bit to the right here, we have the display. So this is going to be displaying the preset that you have currently loaded. And a little bit to the right, we have our left and right arrows that cycles through the different presets in that current bank. To the right of that, we have our menu button. This is where we can load and save presets, and this is where we can also initialize the patch. So I'm using a custom init patch, and if you wanna have that preset as well, there's a free link in the video description below. And if you do download that and you want that to load up every time we select initialize, we have to go to the system tab here, and on the content button, we go here where it says init preset, and then you open and you select wherever that preset is saved on your hard drive. To the right of that, we have our undo button, which is really nice because if we make any mistakes or we do something that we don't really like, we can always undo those changes. And the really cool part is we can also undo preset changes. So if you're working on a preset and you accidentally change it, you can just hit undo and you can keep working on whatever you're working on without having that patch get lost. Next up, we have the info screen that's going to show polyphony, CPU usage, BPM, note and note velocity. So if we play some notes here on a init saw wave. We can see all that information up here on the top. And to the right of the info screen, we have our master meters as well as a final output knob. So we can adjust the final levels of our patch and it can also boost up to a maximum of 200%. On the left-hand side of Avenger, we have the content browser. So here's where we're gonna find all of our installed expansions. Simply click on an expansion and start browsing the presets. So for example, let's go to Bells and maybe select this one right here, Smoky Bell. And we're going to be playing that patch. So something to keep in mind is that the organization here is very important. You'll see how all these presets are organized for the type of sound that they are. I'd recommend to follow this file structure when you start making your own patches and your own banks and all that. To the right of the content browser is where we're going to find our oscillators and our oscillator settings. So right now we just have a default saw wave. We have one oscillator, as you see right here, oscillator one. So if we want to add another one, we just simply click on this plus here. And now we have two. We can have a total of eight oscillators here, which is pretty cool. And then what we can do as well is once we put our mouse over this top here, we can mute this first oscillator if we want to. If we want to kind of just listen to our patch without this oscillator, we can mute that first one or we can alternatively solo this and it's going to mute everything else except for the one that we soloed. Also, it's really nice as well. So this is oscillator one. We can double click this here and we can type in whatever we want to. So it's easier to keep track of what the oscillators are doing if you have specific names for those as well. So if you don't want an oscillator and you want to remove it, we can just right click the name here and then we select delete and then it's gone. To the right of the oscillator panel is the routing panel. Now this spot is very important because this is where we're gonna decide where the oscillator is rounded to and in what order. So it's gonna go from top down. So looking at what I have here, we have an ARP right here right now, it's turned off. So I just have a sound wave. If I want an ARP, I just turn this on. And then I have an ARP there, I can turn this off. We're also going to a pitch envelope, then to our filter, then to the first amp. We can also go to a step sequencer that's turned off right now. Right now we can go to a send reverb, which is disabled right now, but if I want some quick reverb, I just turn this on. And then I have my send slider right over here. So we can turn this off, then I also have a delay going on here as well. have those disabled because I want the init patch to come out pretty dry and it's kind of a quick button to turn things on. And then down over here, we have the out effects and then to the master filter, but that's disabled right now. And then to the output. 
Now, what's really cool, there's a lot of entries here. So if we're kind of unsure where something is, for example, let's say the uh, the second, this delay here, this on the send, we can right click this and we see that little red square that kind of just changes and shows you where that's at on the synthesizer. It's really nice as well. So if we're wondering where the filter is, we can right click here and it's going to show us where the filter is, where the pitch envelope is and the master filter. So it's going to kind of take us there, which is really nice. So we get that way by right clicking on that. Right above the routing panel, we have a tab called drums. And yes, you can have an entire drum set inside of Venture. It's actually pretty crazy. And then on the right hand side, we have a trig for event triggers, which we're going to cover these tabs in details a little bit later on in the course. But I want you to know that these tabs are here. And we can also solo and mute these ones as well, kind of like how we did with the oscillator. Next up, we have our amp envelope section with our usual controls and a few special ones. The first one is going to be spike. So if you ever want an extra transient or your patch to kind of be a little bit more snappy, this is a perfect knob for that. So as we turn this up, we get that really snappiness, that extra transient, which is really nice on arpeggios if you really want them to pop through the mix. And next up, we have our pan right, left and right self-explanatory but these next two knobs are actually pretty cool so we have this pan track and as we turn this to the right what we're going to notice is take a listen to our low notes and then our high notes so this is basically spreading the lower notes more to the left side and then the higher notes more to the right side kind of at like a piano would function and even just with one saw wave it really kind of gives us a, a wideness to our sound which is definitely very cool to use. So we can double click this to go back to default. And then we have spread, which is really cool. We're gonna dive deep into all these modules a little bit later, but I do want to show you about this spread one because I think this is really awesome. I do this now, they're synthesizers, but it's, I have to set this up. So which is really nice that this is just already done for us. So basically, if we turn this to the right, we can see in our tool tip at the bottom, it says alternate and we start increasing, right? Now with slow values, you don't really hear, but let's go all the way to the right and tell me if you notice what's happening here. So every single note is going to the left and to the right. And if we even just have a little bit like that, it's actually kind of nice. It's those little subtleties that are actually really cool. And then if we turn it to the left, we can see that this changes to random. So let's go all the way to the left. So it's gonna be a random choice every time we hit a node where it's gonna land in the stereo field, which is also a really cool function as well. So next below here, we have a basically a typical envelope. We have attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release. And this is a perfect spot to kind of show you that some of these knobs have an inside ring. And what this means is that there's an extra function that we use with our right mouse button. So with our left mouse button, we can bring this up. We can adjust our attack, right? A slower fade in. However, if we, adjust, if we want to adjust this curve, we right click and then we can go up or down to adjust the curve. And that's what these extra rings inside these buttons do. So anytime you see these here, whether you see them in the oscillator section or something like that or anywhere on the synth, keep in mind that maybe look on the tooltip and see what the other version of that does. And if we have a right click here and it's kind of all like this, you want, we want to reset. If we left click, it's going to reset the main value. But if we double right click, it's going to reset that value as well. And then we have basically our basic envelope here with an external source as well. So below the amp section, we have our filter section. So let's select on filter one. And on the far left side where it says type, we can select this here and change out different types of filters. There's a lot of cool ones to go through. And one of my favorites here is the TB right here. Sounds actually pretty cool. That was one of the first ones I went to go and use because I love that filter sound. And then we have our key tracking if you want that as well. And then our big cutoff knob. It's gonna shave off our frequencies here. We have our resonance as well. And then we have filter drive, which is actually really nice, especially on that TB filter. And then our envelope knob here, turn this to the right, and we're going to get some modulations. And what's really cool as well, we have our attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release, kind of like how we had in our amp section. And the same rule applies right on our left mouse button to move the timing, and then our right mouse button to move the curve as well which is really nice so we can have more filters if we want we just click this plus here and same goes for the amp as well and we can keep adding until we get to a maximum of five but it's actually technically six because we have a master filter that's going to go on the end which is really cool as well Below the filter section is the shaper section. It's a very flexible distortion unit with lots of different types of algorithms to choose from. So basically we need to turn the routing on, right? So if we want to use the shaper, we need to select our oscillator to send it to, and we can click this plus here and select shaper. So right now the shaper is happening first and then it's going into the filter. And if you change this order, you're gonna get quite a different results. So we can grab shaper and we can bring it right under the filter because it sounds really cool after the filter. 
And we, we see here where it says soft, we can click this here and we have all these different choices to choose from. I really do like soft, that is actually a pretty nice one. So we just have to crank this knob here. going to get some distortion and then we have our gain knob so how much of this we want to use and also the frequency which we're going to get quite a different sound so these frequency knobs are a lot of fun to modulate you can make some really cool formant types of sounds and we have another one as well so we can increase the gain here and move that as well so a lot of fun to play around with that one Below our shaper module, we have the modulation matrix and our LFO. So for example, we have an LFO here and you see this little red dot, we can click and we can drag this to whatever we want to modulate. So for this here, let's go ahead and put on the transpose. So now we've made that connection and we can go back to our mod matrix and we see this connection is made, but we don't have any depth yet. We can either change it here like this, or we can always go to this little flag and then kind of move it like that. Same way it works, depending on whichever way you want to do that. <laughs> And like I mentioned before, we're going to get pretty deep into the mod matrix in a later video, but I want you to know that this is here and then we have our LFO and we can change different shapes by clicking on this and maybe have something like this. A little faster if we'd like to. A little slower and if we want more LFOs, we just have to click this plus here and then we can all go all the way up to a maximum of five LFOs. Below the content browser is our effects section. So in Adventure, we have a lot of different effects modules and routing possibilities. Now this is the crazy part here. We can have up to four effects racks, a send effects rack, and a master effects rack, all with eight slots each, which is pretty mind blowing. So in our offsetter section, we can choose and pick how we want to route this, right? So how I have this set up, if you look down here in my routing section, this is out effects one. So it's already routed to go to this first effect stack. So for example, if I right click this here and let's say we want to add a vintage chorus, it's already loaded here and then I play something. We can hear that we have chorus on there and we can disable this right here by clicking the off button. We have just our basic saw wave again. Then we click this again. And then boom, we have something like that. And you can keep adding on stuff here and keep adding it. And so let's say you have this first bank already done and you want another effects rack. So say let's click this plus here. Now we have another stack. Now we can go over here to our oscillator and then we can say go to effects rack two, which is actually pretty crazy. And we can keep adding these up to a four. And then we also have a send effects rack, which is what I mentioned before, how I have my reverb and delay already sent here. So it's kind of nice to just turn those on, increase the slider a little bit and have a little bit more reverb or delay. And then at the very end, we have master effects, which I have an EQ right now, which is bypass. And then you can always right click this. And if you want a compressor at the end, you can do something like that, which is really cool as well. And also keep in mind, you can bypass these entire stacks. So if you have a lot of stuff, you don't want to click all these at once. You can just click this master button off and everything's going to be disabled. And at the bottom, this is going to be telling us where the output of, of this is going to be sent to. So if we click this here, we can say this is going to the master effects, FX1, 2, so on, so forth. So th at the bottom here is where we're going to send the output of this stack. Now, what's also really cool as well is that let's say you don't want to build something right now. We can click on these three lines here and there's a lot of different presets for different racks that you can load in. So you can go to synth base driver one and you have all this stack right here ready to go and ready to use. Okay, so now we get to the center section. So we have this thing called the editor. So right now we have a sound wave and we can just do some editing here and kind of change our waveform. <laughs> Make some really cool, interesting sounds that way. We can do this harmonic, we can do this free, or we can do this on bin, depending on how we want to make our waveform. Next up over here on this tab, we have our ARP settings, which this goes deep, and we're going to have a dedicated video just for the arpeggiator because this is a really advanced ARP. Then we have our drum sequencer, we have a step sequencer, we have pitch envelopes, we have mod envelopes, we have our mixer tab, so with our different oscillators here, and then our drums, and so on and so forth. And then we have different keyboard zones, and then we have our main system settings with lots of different sub stuff, so we can change stuff in our settings here, our content, kind of like how we went with our content location and our initialized preset. And then we can go here for MIDI, and then we have different skills skins we can choose from. So if you want to have a different look, here's where you go and do that. And then some interesting legal info in case that's something you're interested in reading. All right, so now we're getting to the bottom part of the synthesizer. On the left-hand side, we have our pitch wheel. We have our modulation wheel. And on the top here, we have a lot of quick, easy drag and drop modulation sources. So if you want something to be affected by the mod wheel, so we can grab this and let's say the cutoff, let's bring this down and give this some depth here. So anytime we move our mod wheel, 
we're going to get that modulation there. And we also have some quick sources down here that we can use as well. So let's bring back our modulation up. So this is open. So for example, if you want random pitch on every time you hit a note, we can grab this random modulator and go to the transpose, give this here some depth. And you're going to have a random pitch for every single note that you hit. On the right hand side is going to be our macro. So if you want to attach different stuff to different macros, we can click this here and drag and drop to whatever different parameters that we'd like. We have three knobs here and then we also have buttons, which is cool as well to switch different things. And if you run out of these three and these two buttons, you can click the plus and you can click the plus again and then click the plus again. So at the very end, you have these 12 knobs here and then these eight buttons here at the uh, at the bottom. So at the very bottom below this keyboard here, we have the readout screen. Now this is very important because once we turn different values here, we can see at the bottom exactly what the value is. And then we can hover our mouse over and see exactly what those do, especially if they have two different functionalities. So always kind of look at that bottom screen and see what's happening down there. It's very, very revealing. And to the right of that, we have three lock buttons. We have the shuffle, the master filter, and the master volume. So basically the locking the shuffle, which is basically the swing or the groove, and it's gonna lock this value when we change drum kit patterns or art presets. And then the master filter is gonna be locked when we change presets as well as the master volume. So keep in mind that these are down here. So if you wanna lock some of these values and kind of scroll through some different presets without those values being changed, then make sure to click those buttons on. All right, guys, that was a quick tour of the different modules inside Adventure 2 and where we can find them. And keep in mind, if you ever get lost, you can always right click these different things here and it's going to show you exactly where they are, which is really cool. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about the content browser, how we can search through different patches, how we can tag patches to find a little bit easier the sound that we're looking for, and also how to create our own banks and to organize them in the best way possible. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.